One of the advantages of being a bit of a dinosaur in paramedicine is that you are taught skills that nowadays make most students break into a cold sweat. Blind nasal intubation is uh, one of those skills and I'm going to show you how it's done. My name is Alex Hepner and this is Group Call. Traditional intubation is pretty clean. Laryngoscope goes in the mouth, tongue gets swept aside, you spot the glottic opening, tube goes through the vocal cords, boom, airway secured. But blind nasal intubation, you take the tube, you lube it up and slide it through the nostril, it goes down the nasal cavity, through the oropharynx and right into the trachea, past the glottic opening. No fancy equipment, no visuals, just anatomy and physiology, technique, and a whole lot of luck. You use the nasal intubation when you cannot use anything else. Trismus, massive NG edema, no option for surgical airway, it is basically your Hail Mary. For advanced versions of this technique, you'd need lube, syringe, tube, McGill forceps, and a bougie or stylet. But today we are sticking with the most basic version, so you need only a syringe, lubricant and an ET tube. Cuffed or uncuffed? I was trained with uncuffed tubes. They are smoother, less likely to cause bleeding, but cuffed tubes give you a little more control when it comes to inserting the tube to the trachea. Here is how you do it. First, loop the tube. Lignocaine gel is ideal, analgesia and lubrication in one, but in emergency any gel will do. Pick the right nostril, which is physiologically bigger. Press the tip of the nose to open it up a bit more, bevel towards the septum and start sliding the tube in with a little wiggle. Once you get past the nasal cavity, you are in the oropharynx and this is where the real work starts. There are a lot of ways to get the tube from here into the trachea. I counted like 11 described in the literature. I will show you two which I was taught. The first one is the balloon trick. When you're in the oropharynx, inflate the cuff that brings the tip of the tube towards the trachea. Advance the tube slowly. When you hit the resistance, deflate the cuff, push through, reinflate. You're in. The second method, well, it doesn't have a fancy name, to be honest. So you are in the oropharynx. Now keep advancing the tube. Now do you feel a little bulge in the neck? That's probably tube pressing into the right piriform fossa. Pull back slightly, rotate the tube 90 degrees counterclockwise. That gets you back on track to the trachea. Now bonus. Here's a move that can help both techniques. Optimal external laryngeal manipulation or ELM. This is not Salix maneuver. This is not burp. OELM is pressure on the thyroid cartilage, not the cricoid, directed posteriorly, maybe a little superior or lateral. Now let's talk about the part no one likes to hear. The success rate, not great. Even trained paramedics average between 58 and 72% success with this method. And let's be honest, most of the big medical societies don't even recommend it. The breeds, Canadians, French, Germans, nope, not on their list. But the American Society of Anesthesiologists, yeah, they included it in the 2022 Difficult Airway Guidelines as a rescue technique. So, no room for laryngoscopy, confined space, minimal light, chaos all around. Apparently, a blind nasal intubation is fast, requires minimal equipment and is less invasive than surgical airway. They say it's ideal for war zones. All those arguments you will find in modern literature and I leave links in the description. Would you try it or does it belong in the medical museum? Let me know in your comments. Also, if you are into the airway stuff, this video is for you. My name is Alex Hepner and this was Group Call.